Right. Welcome everyone to our Hopkins Region YouTube service for this Sunday. Um, welcome to our people throughout our Hopkins Region and to people who are from somewhere else that are watching us. Good to have you with us. Today our theme will be about hope. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live and we pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge that we have what we have because of their dispossession and so we commit ourselves to reconciliation and justice as first and second peoples together. Breath of God, breath of life, breath of deeper yearning. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Comforter, disturber, interpreter, enthuser. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Heavenly friend, lamplighter, revealer of truth, midwife of change. Come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Lord is here. God's, God's Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. us. In our lectionary readings for today, we have Psalm 139, which is one of my very favourite psalms. In fact, uh, we have the reading from Romans 2, which is another one of my favourite readings, so we're blessed with choice for this week. But in, rather than reading the psalm, we're going to sing this song, O God, You Search Me and You Know Me, which is based on that psalm, 139. If you can sort of engage with the prayer in terms of whether you're agreeing with what I'm saying or whether it means something for you, make this your prayer as well. Dear God, in my life I've been searching for you. From the simple faith I was taught as a child, through questions and doubts where you seem to vanish, to new insights where I thought, I've got you now, to more challenges to my faith, and a deeper faith dawning. It seems the closer I get, the further there is to go. I know that what I know is not much in reality, and what I believe now may not work in the future, but that's okay because I know deep down, puny as I am, that I am held and loved by you in your grace. And that is what counts, 
and overrides my doubts and mistakes, my sins and my blind spots. Jesus told a story of a farmer sowing grain that fell among the different soils, the rocky, the shallow, the good soil. I thought of this because it's the gospel reading for today. And when I went for a walk along the rocky, limestone, windswept track past Lake Galea the other day, all along was life. The tough tea trees and thriving succulents and mosses almost glowing green. And I think it was your spirit that prompted me. I saw that you are life. Not just in us or in abundant crops and mighty forests, but in the life that is found in every nook and craggy gap. You're the prickly weeds and the straggling plants just hanging on. Dear God, you love this world of diversity and find a place for everything. Your grace is the truth behind every fact and every discovery. We can only accept it, appreciate it, seek it, and call on your spirit to help us live it. We do so with reverence, awe and joy. In the name of Christ. Amen. And we're going to sing a song by Tricia Watts, Faith, Hope and Love. Please sing along with us. Faith, hope and love. This is what we long for. Faith, hope and love. This is what we need. Faith, hope and love. This is what we cry for. Oh, to just how to live. Trust in the truth. This is what we long for. Trust in the truth. This is what we need. Trust in the truth. This is what we cry for. What we long for, patience within. This is what we need, patience within. This is what we cry for. The Bible reading is from Romans 8, verses 12 to 25. So then, my friends, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. For the spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the spirit makes you God's children. And by the spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess the blessings he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared at all with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. All of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his children. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was the hope that creation itself would one day be set free from its slavery to decay and would change the glorious freedom of the children. Sorry. 
and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that up to the present time, all of creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. But it is not just creation alone which groans. We who have the Spirit as the first of God's gifts also groan within ourselves as we wait for God to make us his children and set our whole being free. For it was by hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who of us hopes for something we see? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Hi, Velma. Um, I heard some people were hoping to that you'd be here today because they were hoping they'd see you. So, how have you been? Did you go back to school this week? Well, I only got to go back to school on Friday. Oh, how come? Well, it was a bit like with that Bible reading. Was it? How? Well, you know the bit at the end? We hope for what we do not see and we wait for it with patience. Oh, yeah, well, what happened? Well, I had a bit of a sniffle on Monday morning, so Mum said, I think you better stay home, Val, May. I thought, beauty, like the Melbourne kids, an extra week's holiday. I'll be able to stay home and watch the bold and the beautiful on telly. Then Mum said, you'll have to get tested for the coronavirus. Oh, I wasn't so happy then. Well, when we eventually found the place at the hospital, there was a queue, 1.5 metres apart, 1.5 kilometres long, and by the time we got to the front, it was too late to see the bold and the beautiful, and they said, if it's just a sniffle, we won't test you here. You'll have to go and see your doctor. So then we went to the doctor and had to make another appointment. Guess when that was? I don't know, when? The next day at 3 p.m. There was a line up again and it took so long that I didn't get to see the bold and the beautiful again. So how's like that like the reading? Well, it says we hope for what we do not see. We hope that we didn't see that I had the coronavirus. And we waited for it with patience. There was a lot of waiting with the cues of patience. I think when it talks about patience, it's about not getting too anxious while you have to wait. So what did you find out in the end? I assume you don't have it. Well, we had to wait two more days for the results. Did you wait for, with, that, for, with that sort of patience? Oh, yes. I knew I'd been clear I put on the sniffle in the first place. Well, thanks for sharing that, Valme, and not sharing the coronavirus with us. OK, bye. There's so much that we could say from these readings today, but uh, the thing I want to focus on is hope. And in my spiritual diet, um, there's three shows or podcasts on Radio National that I find really encouraging. There's Soul Search, and there's God Forbid, and there's the Religion and Ethics Report. And on Soul Search the other week, uh, Meredith Lake was interviewing a man, David Newhauser, who has a book out called Hope in a Secular Age. So many of the ideas from this sort of come from, from what they had on that show. So let's talk about hope. So hope is it's where something that we want to see, but we're not sure about it. So we've got a desire, but there's also doubt. We've got where we are and we've got where we want it to be. But what we want is not there. What we want is here. So what are some of the things that we might hope for? We might hope well, that we don't get sick. We 
Interesting, our church is just over the road from the TAB. Now that's a place that's all about hope, but it's a small hope really. We hope we might win. Whereas I think this side, where the church is, not just the place, but the community is of a bigger hope. Well, what else we might hope for happiness? Um, we might hope for freedom. And we might have big hopes too, so we might hope for you know, world peace, for example. But in between there's this gap. Now, hope is a pretty stretchy sort of thing because it can be just like a, a vague yearning or it can be a, a more stronger desire. It might be just a wish. So, we have a hope. And maybe it is a hope that's a strong hope with a, um, a bit of passion towards it. Now, I hope you recognise that oop, in the end this is going to look like the Wollaston Bridge. And hope is our bridge from one side to the other. Now, when we hope, we probably do a bit of a calculation. There's you know, something we want. It's over there. We sort of think, well... What's the distance? Is it something that we are going to be able to do or not? Now, also with hope, it's about, well, we think about optimism. So, optimism, I reckon, is like this. We start, you know, from back at our experience and we launch something over over the top. But optimism, that sort of she'll be right sort of mate sort of thing, is a bit vague. And it sort of has a bit of a, a vague, well, a bit of a sense of, oh, hopefully the world's going to be good to me. But there's a real sort of hope. A resilient and a, a um, what's the other word? Robust sort of hope has to take seriously the gap and what's in the gap and what are the risks and what what are the dangers. what might be in the lurking in that gap in those waters. So a real hope takes into consideration the risk and the danger and the doubt of what might happen. But when we get to a Christian hope, we have a hope in God as well. And rather than just a slingshot of optimism, our hope has anchored in God. And I see God, God is there. You know, when we say the Lord's Prayer, it's our Father in heaven. So our Father is that God is back in our origin at the beginning. But heaven is that God is there into the future, into the best possible thing that can come from the present situation. So, in our Christian hope, we are linking our line through prayer to God. 
And over here, we have all that's good. And we have Jesus' vision. what the world could be, a world of peace and equality and sustainability and a world of love. And also that we get to heaven when we die. It's also part of our Christian hope. But hope is not just about this feeling. Hope is a choice that we have to make. Hope is a practice. Hope is a discipline. Hope is action. Hope is something that we have to learn. And so we build into the bridge. The practice of making a choice, of acting on that choice, of being deliberately choosing hope and of action. Now with hope and especially for people who you know care a lot about say social issues hope we can start to sag we can start to go down because change doesn't happen quickly enough we can be having doubt and despair but what we find what gives us hope what keeps that hope going is that god also catches catches us and um, links us up and brings us back. God picks us up with inner power. So the Holy Spirit comes in. And from inside, restores that hope when we start to doubt or despair. one thing that happens and the other thing that happens is when you've got a caring community when things start to run down for us it's being part of a community being part like of a church that helps us make that link across to the other side and keeps and restores our hope. There was a quote from that show, no one hopes alone. And I think that the same thing applies for faith and love too, as well as hope. That it's not just a feeling, it's about a choice, it's about a discipline, and it's about action. Faith, hope and love. This is what we pray for. Oh, teach us how to live. Well, let's join together in singing the song Find That Hope, a song that was written by our friend Brad Mitchell. A song written quite a while ago, but still really relevant today. I know you 
just a tiny little glimmer of hope will do. You gotta find that glimmer of hope inside of you. Let's pray. Dear God, renew us in hope. Help us see all the good that surrounds us and fully appreciate the blessings we have. May that break out in a rash of generosity towards those in need, our church community and the cause of your love that you call us to in the empathy of our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, your power is incomparable. Your glory is incomprehensible. Your mercy is immeasurable. Your love for mankind is inexpressible. Dear God, you know us better than we can explain ourselves. You know what life is like for each of us in these troubled times. You know what we need to do, what we can and can't do, and what is too much for us. You know our faith and our doubts. You know our concerns. Yet you want to, us to, yet you want us to tell you them, because in that way you can help us with them. And in praying together, we support each other's prayers. And so we pray for our family and friends. We hope they will be safe, healthy and happy, making good decisions and getting on well. Families are important, complicated and diverse. And parenting is difficult these days, you know. Bless all children and give parents, carers and teachers wisdom as school is tricky at the moment. We pray for all who are bereaved, confused, sick and in pain. We hope they will be consoled and feel safe, healed and relieved. May they also find meaning in it. We pray for all who are lonely, homeless, unemployed, or whose business is in trouble. We pray, we pray for those who are vulnerable and those working to protect others in this pandemic. May they find the hope, support and strength to cope. We pray that all who are longing to be loved may find your love. May they find ways to express your love to others. We pray especially for our leaders worldwide, for wisdom to protect their people and to find ways to share the burden of COVID-19 more equally. We pray for the world. May we come through this as a people united, caring for the planet and with dignity for all. Bless aid workers, medical researchers, environmentalists, and all who work to make it a better world for all. And we pray for ourselves. Help each of us day by day with what we've got to contend with. We are grateful for this church community and its care. May we contribute all that we can to make our church a community of peace and hope and good news. And we give thanks for all who are an inspiration to us and join together in the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
thanks everybody for being part of our service today and big thank you to Peter who's behind the camera and Philip and Jeanette who've come along and Marjorie and Malcolm of course and we finish this blessing and then we'll have a song to finish may the spirit help you see yourself as God sees you a wonderful burst of God's very own life a blessing to this beautiful earth may that vision give you hope to be even more a blessing, and in that be blessed. In the name of Christ. Amen. So let's finish singing together the hymn, In Faith and Hope and Love.